this time suck and in this video we are looking at radians so radians are just a different way of measuring angles than degrees so firstly we need to look at how to convert degrees into radians and then also how to convert radians into degrees so in order to do degrees into radians, what we have to do first of all is divide the number by 360 and then we have to times it by 2 pi. Now we could also do dividing it by 180 and times it by pi, whichever one is easier to remember. But then in order to get radians to degrees, therefore we just have to do the opposite and divide it by 2 pi this time and then times it by 360. So for example, this question here asks in radians, what is 57 degrees? So we're gonna start off by dividing it by 360. So therefore 57 divided by 360 is equal to 19 over 20, 19 over 120, sorry. And therefore, we do 19 over 120. And we times it by 2 pi. And that is therefore equal to 19 over 60 pi. Now, this is very close to one radian so 57 degrees is around one radian not exactly but around one radian so the other thing we need to be able to do with radians is work out the sector area and the arc length and it's worth noticing that these formulae only exist when the angle is in radians if it's in degrees you have to use a different formula but in a level you don't need to know the other formula for if it's in degrees but this sector area is gained by half r squared theta and then the arc length is simply r theta it's a very simple formula you do have to learn these they are not given to you in the exam so the question says find the arc length and the sector area of a circle of radians six centimeters and an angle of three quarters pi at the center and normally we will see radians in terms of pi and that instantly knows that it is radians even if it doesn't say radians explicitly in the question so we'll start off by doing the sector area and this means that all we're going to do is say that half and then we're going to times it by r squared so that's going to be half times six squared and then we're times it by theta which is three quarters pi Then we're just going to type that into our calculator and we are going to get 27 over 2 pi and this is going to be centimetres squared. So that's sector area there, I'll put an SA for sector area, not to be confused with surface area. And then in order to do arc length, which I'll just say A l in the exam probably write out the whole thing of arc length or because al could be different things it's not official notation but this can be given by six because it's r and then times that by three quarters pi again type that into your calculator and this time you're going to get nine over two pi As it's not an area, it'll just be centimetres. So that is the two answers for those questions there. So the next thing to look at at radians is small angle approximations. And again, it's worth noticing this only works when the angles are in radians. Again, degrees will not work. But this means that when the angle is small, you can say that sine theta is equal to just theta. Then tan theta is equal to theta. And the slightly more difficult one, cos theta, can be equal to 1 minus a half theta squared. So this should make more sense when we look at a question. And this question says, find approximation for these expressions when theta is in radians and it's small. So this says theta sine theta over 1 minus cos 2 theta. So to start this off, we're going to look at the numerator. And we know that theta is going to say the same 
And then because we're going to use our small angle approximation for sine theta, that is going to be times by another theta. Then the numerator is slightly more difficult, and this is because we have a cos in here. So we're going to keep that 1, and then minus, and then instead of having that cos there, we can say that that is going to be 1 minus a half, and then it's going to be 2 there, because it's um, 2 theta there. So if it was just theta, it would stay the same. If it's 3, it would be 3 here. But it's going to be 2 and then theta. And then that is going to be squared. And then it's all about simplifying what we have here. So that means that we can get it to theta squared. And that is over. The ones will cancel there, so that one's there going to cancel. That one there is going to cancel. Minus and a minus, we're going to get half times by 4 theta squared. And remember that 4, because this 2 is also going to be squared. That's why I've put the brackets around it. That is therefore going to be equal to theta squared over 2 theta squared. You'll be able to notice we've got theta squared here, theta squared here. Those can cancel, which means that we're left with just a half. And that is how you use a small angle approximation to make to simplify something like this by getting rid of the sines, the cosines, and the tans. So the final question we've got here incorporates a number of things that we've been learning about. And the first one says, find the length of uh, the arc BC. So for that, we are looking at what this is here. So in order to do um, arc length, that is just r theta. So that means that we're just going to do 0 0.5, because that is what theta is, times by r, which is 5, which means that we're going to get the answer of 2.5 meters. And that is our answer for that. Then B is a similarly fairly easy question, as it asks to calculate the area of a sector ABC. So we're looking for the whole area of this. So that means that we're going to be using the formula half r squared theta. So that means that is equal to half times by 5 squared times by 0 0.5, which is going to give the final answer of 25 over 4 meters squared. But the next two questions is where it starts to get slightly more difficult. And we're given a side note that M is the midpoint of AC. And we can see in this that the radius is 5. And we have to find the perimeter of a shaded region. So that is all of that, that, and then obviously the arc length. So we've already worked out the arc length, and that is 2.5. There we are. And then we can already know the MC. So we write plus MC, and that is the midpoint to C. As M is the midpoint, AC would be 5 meters because the radius is 5 meters, which means MC must be also 2.5. So that there is going to be 2.5. So that means we've worked out two of the things in the perimeter. Now we just need to work out what this is here. And we know that this point here is 0.5. We also know that this here is 2.5. So this means that we can use a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a to find out what this uh, side length is here. So that means that we're going to write here the formula that we'll be using. And this is just simple trigonometry. But we have to make sure that we have got our calculators in radians so we can get the correct answer. So 
a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So that's a, then this here will, can be a this length, that's b, that means that this here can be b, and then this point here can be c, and that is c there. So therefore a squared is equal to 2.5 squared, as that is what b is, plus 5 squared, So that's minus and then 2 times by 2.5 times by 5 and then times by cos a which is cos 0 0.5 making sure our calculator is in radians and that means that we can find that a squared is equal to 9.31 So that means that a is equal to the root of 9.31, as that's what a squared is, and that is equal to 3.05. Therefore, the perimeter, to write p here, is going to be equal to 2.5 plus 2.5, as that is those two points there, the arc length, and then this point here, which is 5, then plus 3.05, so that's going to be 8.5. 0.5 meters. So finally, and I'm just going to change it into a different question, so we can see which one we're doing. We're going to work out what D is, and D is find the area of a shaded region. And in order to do this, we are going to um, do the shaded area, the whole area, minus this triangle here. So we already know that the whole area is 25 over 4 and that's because we worked it out in part B and then we're going to minus the triangle so now all we need to do is find out what the area of the triangle is and in order to do this we're going to do half AB sine C and because we have a sign there it means it does matter whether our calculator is in radians or degrees and we will need it to be in radians because we are working in radians so half a b sine c and we have the um, a that's the angle we want to be using so we're just going to rewrite this as half b c sine a just to make it slightly easier to see what's going on so that means that this is equal to half, and then we have a b, which is 2.5. The c is equal to 5. And then sine a is equal to sine 0 0.5. That then is equal to 3, very near 3, rounding up slightly. And that means that our final answer can be 25 over 4 minus 3, which is equal to 13 over 4 meters squared. So that is our final answer. Along with the question, obviously many different things. You have to know the formula at the start to be able to work out arc length and sector area. And then you have to be able to put in other aspects of trigonometry, remembering how to work in radians. So thank you for watching this video and see you soon. Bye.